Hey there, fabulous dancer, and welcome to this extra special tutorial. In today's intermediate to advanced level tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you a super snaky little combination that you can do with finger symbols to really up the level of your practice today. So if you are ready, go ahead and tie on that hip scarf, grab your finger symbols, and let's get dancing. My name is Sahira, and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. And if you enjoy this kind of belly dance tutorial, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel so that I can send you fantastic free belly dance content every single week. Now let's hit the dance floor. So when we talk about belly dancing with finger symbols, there's always an element of bandwidth you have to consider. And what I mean by that is that say we have, you know, 100% of our brain power to give to any given activity. If we are going to be belly dancing and playing the finger symbols at the same time, you have to split that brain power up between those two items, right? So depending on your level of dance and depending on your level of finger symbol skill, you have to act accordingly. So in this combination, I've kept both at what I would consider a dull roar. They're both kind of a medium. We're gonna start with the belly dance because it is a little bit more simple, uh, though snaky and a lot of fun. And then we're gonna talk about the finger symbols. We're gonna break them down by themselves, drill them without dance, without music, and then we're going to put it all together. So let's talk about the dance first, because this is the part that I think might be easiest to put on autopilot, especially when you're learning something new. Putting something a little bit on autopilot can really be beneficial. So the music we're working with is fabulous. It's from the incredible Miss Thea, and you can get more information about her music in the link. But uh, we're going to be doing something really slow and snaky, which is a little bit different for finger symbol work. So this combination is just going to start with a couple of simple inner hip rolls inner hip roll, inner hip roll. And then whichever side just did your inner hip roll, we're gonna push out with a figure eight, and then sit to reverse undulate, right? And then we can do that again, always thinking of the inner hip roll as coming from a weighted leg. So the right side is weighted. You're gonna plie to begin that vertical figure eight, that inner hip roll, heels lift off the ground, inner hip roll, inner hip roll, whichever leg just went with that, whichever foot is free, you're going to step out nice, big, gooey figure eight. We've got lots of time for this gooey figure eight that turns you to an angle. Release, tuck, roll up, maybe a little chin accent if you're feeling sassy. Yeah. Repeat. So that's one side and the other side. You're always going to take that inner hip roll from a weighted leg, inner hip roll, inner hip roll, take it, push it out, figure eight, sit, roll up, repeat inner hip roll, inner hip roll, step it out, figure eight, sit, roll up. Let's do each side again, inner hip roll, inner hip roll, figure eight, I'm gonna add some arms, roll up, inner hip roll, inner hip roll, figure eight, reverse, roll up. Let's talk about a couple of ideas here. Like I mentioned, this is gonna be slow and snaky, so I really want you to take your time Think about the floor being kind of gooey as opposed to dancing on top of a flat surface. I want you to really think about like with that figure eight that you're digging into the ground. Feet can be wide, stance can be wide, but be sure if you're really gonna twist those hips, you wanna be sure that the feet are mobile and not stuck to the ground because otherwise you risk tweaking your hip and your knee out in a different direction than your toes. So really allow those feet to be mobile as you dig through. Same thing, these inner hip rolls face forward but I'm thinking like you're dancing on a waterbed, right? There's a little bit of a flow to it, up and in, up and in. So it has a lot of, a lot of breath, not bounce, but a lot of air underneath it, yes? And then arms can kind of be dancer's choice, but when we do the finger symbols, we're gonna do something kind of fun with it. So I want you to think about as you reverse undulate, we're gonna bring the hands up, so everything comes up. The energy comes up, the arms come up, and then they're gonna come back down as you inner hip roll, perhaps in a second position here, reverse undulate, come up. Let's do that again. Inner hip roll, arms come down, arms open to second, and then they float up with breath. One more time, inner hip roll, really using the floor, figure eight, sit, roll up, arms above the head. So that, my friend, is your dance part of the combination. So now go ahead, grab your finger symbols, and let's talk about what we're gonna play on the Zills.
Alrighty, so today I'm playing on some of my favorite finger symbols. These are the Tuts in Brass by none other than Soroyan Mastercrafts. If you'd like to get your own set, you can always find them at the link below at sahirabellydances.com slash Soroyan Symbols. They make, in my humble opinion, the best finger symbols on the planet. So that's what I'm playing today, in case you're curious. Let's talk about the pattern. The pattern we're using with this dance movement is going to be mostly based off of what I call running fives. It's five sixteenth notes in a row, or five quick strokes. So you could just count the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Or I like to use the musician counting method so that you can really feel where those strokes fall within the beat. And so we're going to be playing on one E and a two and a three E and, one E and a two and a three E and. So if this is your tempo of your music, it's going one, two, three, four. Zills are going to go like this. One E and a two and a three E and. One E and a two and a three E and four. One E and a two and a three E and. One E and a two and a three E and four. We're going to stick mostly with like gentle ringing tones. I invite you to use either the basic stroke where your finger symbols hit each other basically head on and then open to a ring. Or what I am going to use, because this music makes me want to use more of a gentle ring tone, which is a slightly more edge to edge tone that has a little bit of a less, less uh, attack to it. So it's a little bit more angelic. So I'm hitting the zills a little bit lighter. I'm thinking about connecting them edge to edge instead of flat to flat. Play with it and see what works for you. So once again, the pattern as I'm counting it is one E and a two and a three E and, one E and a two and a three E and four. So it's almost the same thing twice, but the second time we're gonna give one extra stroke for good measure, right? I'm gonna continuously alternate for the most part. However you use your hands, as long as it works for you, is fine by me. So let's go ahead and play it. I invite you to kind of mark time. That way you're instantly tying together your body movement and your finger symbols, right? Because it's rare that we sit and play. We almost always dance and play. So if we're going one, two, three, four, go ahead and say the pattern with me. Here we go. One E and a two and a three E and. One E and a two and a three E and four. Again, one E and a two and a three E and. One E and a two and a three E and four. Shall we play it? Let's get good. Get it going. Six, seven, eight. One more time. I'm going to change it up a little bit now. Watch this last one. Yeah, I'm going to show you that one more time. On that one stroke on the four, the little extra stroke we do the second time around, I'm going to invite you to do it as a cross-handed ring. So all that means is you're going to take one zill from your right hand, one zill from your left hand, I don't care which one it is, and hit them together, which is why we bring the arms up above the head for that moment, right? So there's your pattern. Let's go ahead and say the pattern as we dance the combo, right? If you can say it, you can play it. That's step one. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Let's say we start that, um, that inner hip roll on the left. It's going to go one E and a two and a three E and, one E and a two and a three E and four, one E and a two and a three E and, one E and a two and a three E and four. Again, one E and a two and a three E and, one E and a two and a three E and four, or I count one, two, three, four, five, 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 one. You could count it either way. If you're familiar with the musical counting method, I highly recommend you use that one. But if the fives make more sense to you, Go for it, whatever is going to get you to the finish line. Yeah? So now, let's try it all together. Take a deep breath. Exhale slowly. 
We got this nice and slow. Neither part is super difficult, right? It's always just the putting it together that takes a little bit more thought, right? Try to put something on autopilot, probably the dance. I will continue to dance with you so you can just follow me and mimic. Pay attention to the finger symbols, starting with inner hip roll on the left. Five, six, here we go. Figure eight. Again. One more time each side. that going yeah feel free to repeat that as many times as you need and when you are feeling ready we're gonna go ahead and try that with music all right let's take a deep breath up let's imagine how does that pattern go one e and the two and the three e and yeah here we go on five six seven eight go no matter what happens <laughs> congratulations for attempting the thing right it's always tough a brand new skill putting together the finger symbols and the dancing while you're expected to like breathe and smile at the same time is totally a challenge so if you didn't get it the first time just keep practicing the process is the point the journey is the destination right so try to enjoy this learning process because that's kind of what it's all about, honestly. I would love to hear from you. How did you enjoy this? What was the most challenging part? What part did you like the best? And if this kind of thing is totally your jam, and I, I hope it is, and if you it is, like we are totally kindred spirits, I would love for you to join me for my best-selling online course, Fabulous Finger Symbol Basics, which will give you the basics that you need, the foundation you need for really fantastic finger symbol playing. You can get more information on that course at thehirabellydances.com slash symbol basics. I would love to make music with you there soon.